If you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, the, Christian Horner texting somebody who works on that team inappropriate things. It's just, it's absolutely everywhere. It's not just Formula One. It's not just in the movies, like where the Harvey Weinstein thing with the Bill Cosby thing. There's a power dynamic between men and women that it exists. There's a power dynamic, it's in the workplace. It's everywhere that you've ever worked. You know it yourself. And so this guy is obviously thinking, I could do whatever I want. You know, I'm the head of, I'm the head of Red Bull. And so powerful, in line for potentially a knighthood. And that's the biggest thing that he's worried about right now, probably the status as usual, which is more important to men. Status and power is more important to men in the workplace than freedom, than money. So if you've got the typical guy going to work, doesn't matter whether it's Christian Horner, head of Red Bull, or whether it's just some regular Joe, he is more interested in status and power rather than money and freedom in the job, in a workplace, in a job. The very point of going to work, when you, sp when you speak to most people, they'll say the very point I go to work is to pay the bills, is to, to earn money. Most people are more motivated by status and power. And so when you get to that stage in Christian Horner's life and you can just send whatever you want, it's not just, it's not a new thing, is it? It's something that he's been doing his whole life. Now he's married to Jerry Hallowell and now it's got out and now other people have come forward and said, actually, here's some more screenshots to fuel the fire. Oh, and now what's Red Bull's response? They're gonna fire the girls that have accused really bad decision, really bad decision. And now what we've seen today is something with Max, which not gonna end well not going to end well at all so they're going to need to clean shop but the real issue here is like this is happening everywhere and it's pretty pathetic if you think about it this guy is is acting in an inappropriate way he's acting in a way because he thinks he has the power to do whatever he wants he has um he has the status to do whatever he wants and he's it, it, it's irrelevant what he's whether he's married or whether he's not it's it's embarrassing because people see that and they think that that is men. That's just men because that is men in the workplace. I know men like that in the workplace and you'll hear women speaking like this. It's absolutely not right because most of us think like this. You absolute dick. You absolute dick. You've got a wife at home. You're recently married. You're 50, 55 years old. I don't know. You're out of the game. You're out of the game. It doesn't matter whether you're the head of Red Bull. You're married to somebody. And when you're married to somebody and when you're in a long-term committed relationship, you really, you realize that very, very, very quickly, that person, no matter what you've done your entire life, that person becomes your best friend. You spend the most time with them and they become your best friend. And so to be texting something inappropriate to girls who work for you, probably younger than Jerry Hallowell, how's that making her feel? How's it making her look in front of her friends, in front of the public? This is a public couple. It's making it look like a laughing stock. It's making it look like a joke, and that's your best friend. So what real men think is you would do that to your best friend. That's how you would treat your best friend. So how would you treat, if I was your friend, how would you treat me? If I'm like number two or number five or whatever, how are you gonna treat me? That's how we think about people. When I have friends that cheat, that's how I think. How would, I'm, not even, I'm not even number one, I'm not, that's your best friend. That's your long-term girlfriend or your wife. That's how you treat your best friend. How are you going to treat me when my back's turned? When you're with my girlfriend? Like, so we think, what a dick. That's how, that's how we think. We think, what an absolute dick. What's, like, what has come over his mind? And it's not, an, it's not just a, a moment of madness. It's not like him going out one night and going home with a girl and then, you know, oh, geez, like it's once in a lifetime. It's not like that. This is calculated and it's obviously been happening for a long period of his career. And so it's great that it's, it, it's come to light. It's great that people are sharing things like this, but we don't think, uh, it, it, we, I made a joke about it the other day because it's, you know, it's a Spice Girl lyric. If you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends, but it really isn't funny. And um, it's just really, it, you know, what? it's really pathetic. It really is really pathetic. And um, it should make you angry if, uh, whether you're a Red Bull fan or not. Like, it should make you really angry if you're a Red Bull fan because that's the guy that's been, that's the guy that's representing at your side. And I think if they clean shop, which they'll have to do, he's, he's obviously the first to go. And to actually get rid of those girls that have accused him, unless they have some serious evidence that they have wrongly accused him, then 
they are screwed. That's absolutely screwed. A really bad move by him, and it's a really bad move by Red Bull. They've treated it absolutely the wrong way. But it'd be interesting to see what happens. But I feel sorry, sorry for Jerry. Just a laughing stock and a, and a joke. And um, as I said, whether I want to admit it or not, that's a British icon. That's um, even if it was during the Oasis era. It's a British icon, and um, and so yeah, he should be dealt with.